It's Brian Preston, the money guy. Here's some legal ways. There we go. Legally, legal makes legal it ways better. to avoid, you know, some of the taxation or the sting of this. So let's yep. talk about the loopholes or, or ways that this kind of went through. The first, the stretch IRA. Yes, it's been wounded, but it still lives. It's still, it still it's lives. Still it's still out there. And who's here? It still lives for spouses. So if you if your primary beneficiary on your retirement accounts is your spouse they're still going to be able to treat this IRA or 401k, whatever it is, just like it's theirs. That's right. On their life expectancy. It's also disabled beneficiaries. So a lot of people, because Bo, what's funny is we went through show note prep. You go, what does the government even consider? Yeah, how do they define know, that? Disability. How do you determine that? So they actually based it in the legislation off of section 72M7. I'm just going to read this to you. This is, quote, provides an individual shall be considered to be disabled if is he or she is unable to engage in any substantial gainful activity by reason of any medically determined physical or mental impairment which can be expected to result in death or to be of long continued indefinite duration. So I'll straight up tell you, I, you know, I have a special needs daughter who's autistic. Mm-hmm. She will be the beneficiary of this. If you are a person who has a, retirement assets will continue to be a great planning opportunity for people who have special needs kids sure. or disabilities or things like that, where well, this will still, and I like that. I'm glad yep. they put that carve out. They put the same thing for the chronically ill. If you're asking, what does that mean? Under section 7702BC2, it's quote, any individual who has been certified by a licensed healthcare practitioner as being unable to perform at least two activities of daily living for a period of at least 90 days due to loss of function or capacity. So ADLs, you mm-hmm. see this all the time in long-term care policies. That's eating, toileting, transferring, bathing, dressing, and continence. Yep. So it's it's all those things that we all take for granted being, sure. you know, normal, but sometimes, you know, chronically ill people struggle with these issues. So if you have someone who falls in either of those camps, they can indeed take advantage of the stretch IRA. They can pull the distributions over their life It's gone. They, they've taken a large population and really brought this thing down. Here's one that I think is not completely saturated out there in the financial media yet. Beneficiaries who are not more than 10 years younger than the person passing away, okay. they will still also be able to stretch. I think the IRS was just like, look, if you're, if you're beneficiaries, if you're putting people who are about your age, we're going to go ahead and just let you roll it on over to them. Yeah, and, so like and if you look something like to siblings stretch. or something like that, yeah. then they would be able to stretch Ten it Ten years is what you need to pay attention to. And I alluded to this earlier in the show, but minor children until they reach the state's age of majority. And so if your state is like 21, mm-hmm. this actually means that your child will be able to, on the years that they're under 21, just base it off their life expectancy so the stretch is Very still alive. small, small distribution. Then when they reach 21, majority age, and that's it, some states might even be less than that, but let's just use 21 as the example. They'll have 10 years from that date to distribute it just like a normal person who inherited an IRA. The one caveat I did see, because I know people are going to ask this question immediately, is that it has to be the decedent's children, not the grandchildren. Right. So even if, you're, if your grandchild inherits an IRA from you, it doesn't mean that they get to postpone the 10-year rule until they get to age of majority. It would go ahead and start immediately for them. Yeah, it has to be your children. Your child. So that's a, that's a huge point. I'm glad you brought that up. And then I, I like this because there's always been, when you set up the trust as a beneficiary, you're like, well, is the IRS going to kind of recognize this trust as having the same benefit as an individual mm-hmm. inheriting these retirement assets? They actually clarified that in the legislations. Now, the trust can be treated as an eligible designated beneficiary when the trust is the beneficiary of a disabled or chronically ill person. So like if you I have said, a special needs trust set up for someone like that, it will qualify. Yes, and that's great. That's that's actually a, 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 somebody who has, if you have a disabled child, you will know this is a good thing. So that's a great place planning opportunity. And that leads to now after we talked about the stretch and how it's actually Frankenstein and come back to life where you actually keep this thing intact. Let's talk about some of the other things. QCD, QCDs. Yeah. Qualified charitable distributions. We alluded to it a second ago. We always think again, if we use a case study, a a quick example, uh, this is another one. I think FTE Daniel came up with with, uh, this one. This is Savvy Granny. So let's assume that she has $60,000 in taxable income, including a $10,000 
what was formerly an RMD, but we're going to call this a $10,000 IRA distribution. She plans on giving $10,000 this year to her church and donates it using a QCD. Well, what actually happens is rather than her showing $60,000 of income, because she has now used that QCD, she only has to show $50,000 of income, which if she's in a 22% bracket, would save her $2,200 in taxes. So what's great is she was not going to get to take the itemized deduction because she wasn't going to qualify based on how high the standard deduction is. But now that actually directly offsets her income. So it's a big tax savings using the QCD. Yeah, so it lowers your taxes even if you're taking the standard deduction. But it also, here's what I like. Now, this is nerdy. And it doesn't impact everybody. But a lot of people, they're shocked to find out their Social Security is taxed at 85. Mm-hmm. It has an 85% of its taxable Taxed, yep. at, at tax rates. And you're like, well, wait a minute. I thought that wouldn't be as taxable. Well, here's the thing. There's a chance you do this QCD strategy it will lower how much of your income is taxable, thereby potentially lowering how much of your Social Security is taxable. And the other part is Medicare. A lot of you guys, you can't wait till you hit 65 so you can start taking Medicare and getting that subsidized benefit. Well, the thing is, is they base your Medicare premiums off of your taxable Mm -hmm. income. This is one more way to lower the taxable taxable income to lower those Medicare premiums too. So there's a lot of benefits for people who are thinking about they're charitably minded and they required minimum distributions. They don't want to take this money, but it's a way for them to take it and make it less of a tax impact. Yep. Let's talk about 529s. I, I feel like every piece of legislation that's been coming out that's tax code related, 529s have definitely been getting some love mm-hmm. and um, it, definitely a lot of updates. Because remember, it was 2018 tax legislation that allowed 529 assets were always for college planning. Yep. Well, they were not just all, because you could go to trade school. Sure, but they were always for higher education. They were for higher education. Then in 2018, we found out, no, now K through 12, as long as your state plan administrator allows it, the 529 allows it, K through 12, you can now use your 529s for that. So let's continue the trend. What's happened with SECURE? Now, Tax-free qualified expenses has been expanded to include apprenticeship programs. That's fees, books, supplies, and even Mm -hmm. required equipment. I got to tell you, my brother was in ASE certification for a while. Tools are expensive. So this would definitely be a benefit for for that if you think about it. And then all the people coming out with qualified, you know, with student loan debt. Mm -hmm. They, they kind of, the legislation gave a nod to that because they now said that you can pay principal and or interest up to a lifetime $10,000 limit. And you can also distribute another 10000 for each beneficiary's sibling student debt. And they made this one retroactive going back to 2019, yeah. right? You can go back to 2019 with it. And then that's, that's an incredible benefit if you think about it. So it's one of those things where if you... Um, have student loan debt. And I've talked about this earlier in the show, the planning opportunity here, or a loophole, if you want to call it, is you could now also coordinate the tax credits. Because remember, in years that you took um, 529 distributions, you don't get to count that money towards tax credits. Now there's some grayness there that you might be able to go take tax credits by not using your 529 money but then paying off student loans in the future after you graduate. That's right. Re- really interesting stuff. As we sat around, Brian, kind of talking about as a team here, you know, all right, so the SECURE Act happened. Uh, should it change everything? Should it just cause us to just completely revamp all the planning, all the strategy, all the things we've been doing? The answer is absolutely not. It did change things. There's some things you want to make sure that you're aware of. There's some things that as you're planning about thinking about how you build your assets and taking assets out in retirement and when you have to take assets and how you leave it on to the next generation, there are things that the SECURE Act has changed, but it didn't change everything. Yeah. It didn't change the entire plan that you already had in place. Yeah, and it, this was a lot of press was given this. A lot of people were confused. I mean, and there's other provi- – look, this thing had – I mean, we could have gone even deeper. We could have talked about kitty taxes. Mm-hmm. We could have talked about – what did it do for medical expenses? Because they're still back down to seven and a half percent. A lot of extenders that were put in this year end deal. That's no, that happens every year. But it is exactly what Bo said. Don't panic, guys. Because I think sometimes when new legislation or things like this, the media jumps on and they're going to tell us all the bad stuff. And there is some negative. Like I said, spoonful of sugar to help the taxes go up. I mean, it is a legit thing. I didn't have to sing it for you to realize. This is what happened. Yep. There's a lot of money. There's over thirty trillion dollars in retirement assets. The government has to figure out how they can get more revenue. So they did it, but you don't need to panic. We got you covered. I mean, that's why we wanted to do a show like this is we wanted you to know we think about these things. And that's the perfect lead in for 
you got to have the money guy as a resource. Because here's what you're, you're like watching. is like, why do they do well, – these guys just gave me an, a, an appropriate cliff note version of what's going on with Secure Act. Why would they just do this? Where's the catch? I keep waiting for the infomercial. You haven't seen it because this is part of the abundance cycle. And the abundance cycle is so powerful, powerful for us. We've been doing this since 2006. You come here to the Money Guy Show. You come, you learn, apply, grow. We have no doubt you're going to reach a level of success. You're going to say, I'm too busy. I'm feeling like I am now the CEO of this seven-figure, eight-figure enterprise. I need a CFO in here to help me make yep. sure I'm not screwing up. We know that that is coming around, so that's part of the abundance cycle. You'll come to us. You'll remember who created this success, and that's why we work with clients all across the country. It is that simple. We love doing these shows. We love doing the audio podcast for you guys. We love making the videos for you. We love doing the blog posts. If you haven't gone out to moneyguide.com, make sure you go out, check out the blogs. And if you haven't checked out our resource page, we actually now have resources, whether it be PDFs, spreadsheets, templates, things for you to actually take with you to improve your financial life. We continually update that. We already have, I think we have, I know we have some exciting ones coming out that we're working on right now. So if you have not gone out to moneyguy.com and checked the resource page, you need to do that as soon as you can. Also, I had um, I, I was on vacation with one of my old neighbors. He lives in Chicago now. He's like, I kind of like watching your stuff because I can see, um, you know, how y'all are doing on YouTube. And you can see we're quickly oh, approaching yeah. 50,000. That's right. I'll, I'll just go ahead and say it. Maybe we're crazy for giving this goal out there. I would love, and if you can be a part of this, we'd love to close 2020 out over 100,000. Yeah, so please, if you, because here's the thing. I know because we get to see the data. 75% of you guys are not subscribers. 75% of you who are watching this content are not subscribed to our channel. Go ahead and subscribe. I, this is free. Part of the abundance cycle. You need to be part of the Money Guy family. So go ahead and hit the subscribe button. Go ahead and ring the bell for and get the notifications as well. Morpheus will be so, so proud that I did that. So, Money Guy team out.